Yeah, I mean, assembly theory is like the invert. I mean, assembly theory tells you what you have, and assembly and entropy tells you what they're lo lost. So I think uh, entropy and assembly theory are deeply connected in that way. But I think a, a world where you use assembly theory, you know, you no longer need entropy um, because you you so. And what assembly theory basically does is, um, well, ass assembly theory allows you to, at, first of all, macroscopically, it allows you to assess if an object was created um, by chance or by an evolutionary informational process. Wow, okay. But you need to be able to measure two things. You need to measure um, the thing in high numbers, high copy number, and you need to be able to measure the parts in the thing. So that's kind of cool. But what assembly theory does, it allows you to trace back all the, uh, the, the, um, the, the interactions between objects that give rise to other events, right? Um, at least probabilistically, you can say, right, if I've got this molecule and I chop it up on the shortest path and I want to take the shortest route to make this molecule with these bits, what do I do? Including reuse. I add this bit to this bit, I reuse this bit, okay, because I've got memory. And therefore, what assembly theory does is says, what is the minimum amount of memory I need to have in the universe to make this complex object? And, and if that memory exists for more time than to make one of them, I can make many copy numbers. So if that memory exists for more than making one object, the more complex the object, the more interesting that memory is, because that memory has to really exist. Whereas if the memory only exists to make one object, and then the memory is gone, then that's what you call a random ensemble. In fact, it would be the same. So, so what assembly theory allows you to do is to show how you can build things up by understanding the, the, the causal inter interactions or the contingency. So then this is kind of like a very almost evolution-esque, say, ah, oh, for this to happen, this needs to happen, this needs to happen, this needs to happen, this needs to happen in this sequence of events. And so the fact that you're able to go through those sequence of events and get to your thing, you can think about how weird that thing is, the more steps you've got, because it could have gone off in one of a zillion different directions. And so, and it, so it allows you to appreciate how unique some things are. Um, and whereas entropy just says, ah, oh, this is the average. This is my ensemble. Right. So with, and that's classified as the assembly index, yeah? The Yeah, the, the assembly index is classified at the moment as the number the number of um the shortest the number of steps on the shortest path to construct the object from the, from the from the basic building blocks just a technical question so i understand that why is it the the shortest path so i understand that that's a lower bound but <laughs> <laughs> now, everyone asked me that yeah, yeah. Like, um, you knew it was coming well actually i mean this is it's really funny when you invent a theory because like remember assembly theory could be complete nonsense and so you know i don't think it is but it's like i don't know it seemed good it just like you know did uh, but no there's actually a more fundamental reason um so my my reasoning would be um if you take an object, um, uh, what it does, when, and you basically reduce it to the shortest path, first of all, that is a that is a finite quantity. That is a quantity. Every object has a shortest path to make it. So what that means is, if I come across that object, I know the minimum number of steps I must make to make it. That doesn't say it's only that steps, because I'm sure things are made in long objects. Like, how many people do we see being really inefficient? Or well, we can say, don't do that, do that, right? But what I'm saying is like, so for literally, you know, for me to be able to, maybe I'm type, it, type a sentence, right? For me to type a sentence or come up with the word abracadabra or banana or something, I say, right, this is the minimum thing they need to do to make that string or that thing. And, and I can count those up. And the larger that number, the more improbable it is. And so what, by having the short, by going for the, um, the, the shortest route, it gives me a nice baseline to say, look, shorter, you can't go shorter than shorter. So you, and so you be, you, you'll then have some confidence that something, uh, something is odd if it's over your threshold. Uh, but of course, the way objects get assembled, you know, it's probably an average, there's probably other things there. You could spend a lot of energy to go beyond that. But um, but really, it seems the shortest path is is incredibly significant because of the statistical meaning of those objects coming together in the universe. Right. No, that makes a lot of sense. That makes a lot of sense. Like evolution, for example, you probably have really weird paths to get to evolving the creature, but 
that doesn't matter because you can't really develop anything general out of that. The best thing you can say is the lower bound. Yeah, and uh, exactly. And another thing about the shortest path in assembly theory, we don't think about evolution. We just think about um, we just think about probabilistic processes to get there. So we have to take the shortest path, and it's like a minimization principle, perhaps. And then when we see objects that have that are complicated, have this assembly index or more, you're like, wow, this required probabilistically this number of steps to get there, and it's there. And there's biology making it, and then it must be other things making it. Wow, what? Let's have it look, dig into this, and that's kind of what the 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 the, uh, the meaning of it is, at least at the base layer. Right. So then, are you using that as a as a demarcation line for what constitutes life and not life? Yeah, well, it's a bit more now. I think the shortest path is about really the minimum amount of memory the universe needs to have to make that object, right? And it could be in some cases the universe is right, just random, right? It's like right, do, 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 done. And then that random object, like, well, thanks for making me. I'm also good at making myself. So now the probability that I exist is higher because I'm able to make myself. It's like a self-replicating molecule. So if you have a load of junk that makes a molecule that can reproduce itself, it's going to get faster. So, and that's kind of one of the cool things that we have to look at in assembly theory is that when the object you make on the shortest path, there's a chance of getting there. So it's the shortest way to get there. And once that object is made, if it ha can, if it can also, um, you know, help promote the production of itself and exist in space and time, then uh, something weird is going on. <laughs>